hands up on your body. Drop in the heat, call me Sharanti. Come in the sea like a tsunami. Yes, 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 everyone. How are you doing? Feels like ages since we've done a Harami episode. What are you saying, boys? Afsal Akil, you okay? All good, man. All good. Yeah, all good, man. All good. Really, no, really excited, man. Really excited. I was going to say, I was going to say. I was Hang gonna say, on, gonna can we it. start again? Because Akil's not muted. <laughs> well, yeah, usually we start he's on mute and we have to sit here for 30 oh, seconds yeah, 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 yeah. it sounded muted I was going to say I was up for it man Harami United one for a change like do you know what I mean he's like yeah bro yeah, 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 yeah relax man yeah he's obviously had a hard day man but um, yeah I think this is a kind of a special episode I'd say because I think yeah, as as everybody knows that you know we're, we're obviously looking to represent ourselves more than anybody else but we like to think you know we do represent um a lot of the uh, south asian um public around the globe or you know the 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 minorities from wherever around the globe you know uh, put in a face and I, and it was quite interesting that we recently had a program that came on sky sports um which was what was it called it was called um football's hidden Football. talent yeah that's the one, that's the one. Yeah, and it obviously explores the underrepresentation of South, you know, British South Asians within the professional game. What was your thoughts on it? What, what did you think? You know, what? I'm going to start it off in a way where I'm not going to talk about the things that happen in the program because I have noticed one thing is you know what we need more eyes on this as well. I think there's a lot of people that are kind of brush on the carpet, especially Asians themselves. Um, and because what it is, I've, I've been a lot of people have been basically messaging me saying because I've shared the link and everything over on social media, like literally Instagram, Twitter, and everyone's obviously saying, like, what is this? What's it all about? and stuff because the hidden talents are already there in terms of like Iqbal, Messi, Ronaldo, uh, Neves, and all these, like, but what initial the thing is, the program isn't about them sort of players it is about Iqbal but it's about the people that are British South Asian and I think it needs more eyes to it and if there's anyone that's has hasn't watched it I know this part should be coming at the end anyone that hasn't watched it please watch it um because it is really freaking interesting just watch it after you watch this though yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch well, us we, first and then well, go we, watch that. Well, yeah. Whichever way, I think it might be just as good to watch it first, then come back to us because, yeah. you know, we'll kind of highlight what the thing is. You know, we're going to go through it. And I think, um, Aki, I think you made a kind of, uh, you know, I was just looking and talking about earlier. And one of the one of the lines from the show, and I think it kind of summarised it up perfectly, is that mm-hmm. if Messi was Asian, yeah. he wouldn't have made it. You know, so yeah, if mean, there was... I mean, that was one of the quotes at the start. That yeah, was yeah. from the trailer. It was just that if Messi wasn't was Asian, he would have made it. And to be honest with you, that's it's true. He he would have made it. That's the thing. If Zidane Iqbal was Argentinian, he would have made it. You know <laughs> what I mean? It's either way around. So yeah. Yeah, it's hundred hundred percent. You know, I think I think I believe that. And obviously, having gone through that, you know, similar. Kind of thing what this video and um, what this um mm. program went through it's quite it's quite um what's the word um close to home because like i said even one of the one of the clubs that that was um featured on their sporting car so i played for them as well for a little bit um they're not too far from me so i kind of got it but i think there's other sides to it as well which i think we'll, we'll explore I, I think first and foremost i think the historical context behind this was you know background of british south asians community in the uk and their early involvement in football and the barriers i mean we've had so many guests uh that have come through you know um the likes of sata um like the, the likes of manny who actually went to games and i think they kind of gave their backgrounds on how how it was just at the games the way people will look at them. I mean manny not so much uh, at the beginning because he said he kind of um morphed in you know, but we'd sit there with it, having his bag and things like that. You know, they were they were kind of um, struck out like a sore thumb. That you know, they were, they were abused and things of that nature. But the the, the crazy thing is, is um, yeah, the you know those cultural barriers, the, the stereotypes, which really came out loud. You know, the whole oh South, and these were from um, scouts and things like that, weren't they? 
where they were saying, oh, South Asian players, they're, you know, the kids, they're not into football. Their parents want them to become like doctors and lawyers and they don't, you know, give much yeah, time that, to, that the, to the game. That was quite an impactful quote. When he said... Um, it's true or do, do you think... Count and so doctors and he was like, give me a break. No, they don't. Like, and it's so true. Like, I mean, we've lived through it. I still get it to this day. You should have gone to uni. You should have done this. You should have done that. And I'm like, well... Well, but who said team. that? Who said that to you? Oh, th- oh, this came from my parents, but like, mm. this is what I mean. Like, there was a point in South Asian families where that was the thing of go to uni, do this, do that. And, you know, the world has changed in such a way that we can get into football, we can get into cricket. You know, we've had Pakistanis and Indians on the England cricket team. Like, you know, I know we've, have we had, I don't think we've had anyone in the football team, but. I don't think we're far off. But then also, is it because the talent pool is so wide in England that these guys are choosing to go and play for Pakistan, India, India, Bangladesh, and choosing to represent their sort of their native countries? No, I think I think um I think going back to the question what it was, <clears throat> I think you kind of alluded to it, is that, you know, the parents from the scouts point of view, you know, they they had this misconception that that the parents want their kids to be doing education higher education i kind of do believe that and i think that did impact us yeah because in a way what they're saying is like football from a young age it doesn't get you nowhere do you know what i mean That's yeah the thing. like like with me what it is like i've i'm into the designing like part of things i got told growing up as a little kid that i'm not going to make money out of design and stuff there's no money in it there's no money in art and etc. Whereas, to be honest with you, I used to get told, like, just try doing business management, doctor, this and this and this. But I'm just, I was like, no, my heart's at, in, into art and design. And obviously now it's like, for me, I can say I've made it in a way, do you know what I mean, in that industry. But everyone's different. I think the way he meant it, like you said, Harps, was at a young age, Education is the most important thing. Try doing something that's obviously doctor, um, obviously surgeon or whatever. So, and football in a way is there's nothing there and it's trying to ha- hard to get into. Whereas if you do the whole education system, so you got from school, college, university, placement, job, it seems like an easy route, isn't it? So, yeah, I think. <laughs> Again, I think when we again the the guests that we've spoken to of late, uh, you know, you got Coach Rudy, um, you got Azar as well, and obviously Riz, Rahman. You know, I think I think the biggest thing that stuck out to us when we was listening to their stories um, was literally the backing from the family, because it wasn't coincidental that you know Riz kind of mentioned his dad pushed him pushed him that way you know um involved brothers and all the, the kids you know he'd, he'd be setting up drills after school and things like that whereas obviously you know that's as a coach really even myself you know i'll bring myself into it as well you kind of had to do it yourself mm. you know you had to kind of see what others were doing but you go home you know you, you got to do your homework and whatever and the kids are playing outside and you've got to be back in by six o'clock because a it's too late you can't go out and b you gotta eat your roti and then go to bed like do you know what i mean yeah, like that. yeah. do you know what i mean whereas mm. um the white generation gordy would be outside playing till about eight nine o'clock do you know what yeah. i mean um it's the whole thing they'd have a, a, a ball uh in in bed with them inside mm. the house and things like that we bought a ball and said, like, you got that and get out, get out, get out, get out. <laughs> do you know what i mean it's it's those little marginal gains, I think, um, in, in the programme as well, which was quite enlightening, actually. One of the the Arsenal players, oh, I forget his name now. No, 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 he, he was, some, oh, was he my Martin? in the early 90s, he played for Arsenal. Oh, in the um... part Carter, no, wasn't yeah. he? Was this in the Carter? Jimmy Carter, I think. Jimmy, yeah, Carter. Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter, obviously. Jimmy he was Carter. There. Obviously, I kind of remember him. Um, but he was saying, if you remember he, he's what he was saying, his dad would get him up in the winter, get him up to go and do laps around the park and things like that, saying, look, where the you know the other kids are sleeping or whatever, this is now where you're going to get those gains from them on top of them. This is where we didn't have that. Do you know what I mean? It used to be raining. Do you know what I mean? Like, 
you know I mean? We just wanted to play outside and then they get led you know, like go inside kind of thing. Whereas, like I said, so things like that, I get. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and I think it's, I think it's, it is a misconception. And, and I think one of the um, guests was saying that, okay, the first generation, it was, you know, when our parents come, it was about making money, um, establishing a base. Do you know what I mean? Or we kind of knew they wanted us to do things that they couldn't do. They didn't want us to work in factories or, or, or do lower paid jobs. They want to educate us so we could get those better jobs. Do you know what I mean? But I think now we're in that generation is whereby we've got our kids and we're, we're now a little bit different. But from your experiences, boys, um, how how do you see that second generation? And, and I think you guys are that second generation. Um, well, I think yourself, after, I think you might be, correct me if I'm wrong, um, second generation. Do you know what I mean? I mean, um, for me, it was, I mean, I've said it before. I was raised in a single parent household. You know, I've shared it plenty of times. I'll say it again. My parents are split. My mom raised four kids by herself. It was me and three elder sisters. And they were, you know, my mom was sewing constantly, like, you know, doing alterations and whatever. And, you know, to this day, she still does that. Like, that's her thing. And, you know, she's the alterations lady. She's got business out of it. But my sisters were always, like, the breadwinners in a way, if that makes sense. Like, you had my eldest was, I mean, she went to uni, did accountancy. But she was in, um, what do they call it? She was in recruitment and then retail and then my other sisters you know she's got her own business doing hair and makeup and whatever but she was in retail she was working in car garages and then she was in salons and you know we went through a lot and my mom's big thing was I want my kids educated I want them to go to uni I want them to do as well as they can and obviously my mom didn't have that support to lean on so she was just doing what she knew now, funnily enough, out of the four of us, only one went to uni. And the only one that went to uni doesn't actually use her accountancy degree. <laughs> which so, is always... Which is always a... Yeah, it's, it's Asians for it. Like, no, 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 mom, no, not just Asians. I think that's, now... that, that's just most people. Like, do you know what I mean? That, that, that's what the case is. But sorry, what I was trying to say, uh, Absal, was... If you, obviously with your, um, I think your, your, um, your sister's got kids and things of that nature... Uh, uh, do you see a difference in that? Uh, so this is what this I was coming on to. So with me, yeah, yeah. I played for the school team um, in primary school, a little bit in high school, and it was never like, it was just like, oh, he's doing, you know, he's passing time, he's playing football with his mates, you know, that's it, like, that's it. Whereas with my nephew in particular, he was in Little Kickers. He wasn't really interested in football. My sister just did it because, you know, it was a local activity and, you know, get the kids active and whatever, you know, meet other kids and whatnot. So he was in Little Kickers. Then he was into sort of other teams. And now he's in his local team as like he's a goalkeeper at the minute. And he's football mad. Like he could literally, I mean, I've said it before, they're homeschooled. He could wake up at seven o'clock in the morning be in that back garden with that net and that ball till the sun goes down. And he wouldn't he wouldn't complain about food. He's, I mean, you know what it's like. You've got kids. He won't complain until after he's done doing what he's doing. And then he'd be like, I'm hungry. I want this. I want that. Like, he's got that energy in him and that commitment. Whereas my sister's like, okay, I understand this is what you want to do. And this is what you want to look at. But, you know, you've got to balance that with the homeschooling, with your your Islamic studies and things like that. And this is where I related it on the Riz podcast to how his parents managed him and Zesh growing up. And it's sort of similar in, to, in a way to what my sister's doing. And my sister actually followed somebody else, um, which is Laith Gulzard's mom, who's obviously at Brighton, probably going to be in the first team, hopefully in the next couple of years. I know he's in the 21s at the minute, but... His mum's a homeschooler. She's a published author. And Laith is a South Asian kid who, again, into football, but also homeschooled. Like, it's a totally different niche. And I'd class him and my nephew as the generations after me. And it's, as things go on, 
it seems like people are getting more and more accepting, which is good. And obviously there's a will there to push it, but it's all about, I think, maintaining your culture, maintaining your religion, and obviously balancing that with football. Which yeah, no, no, totally. Uh, no, we totally get, get that we're I'm starting to get to now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a... Aki, even from your experiences then, so, it's, you know, what kind of school did you go to? Was it obviously a lot of Asians, Gore, mix? You know, was it predominantly one or the other? What would you say was, yours is? I think primary was all Asians. Uh, mm. Secondary was just mixed. Mixed. But obviously, you know what it was? You know, with the secondary school, it was more... It, it was it was mixed, just obviously as Asians and also white and stuff as well. But it's like those Asians, we used to... All we needed was a ball. And we used to play, like, us Bengalis, Pakistanis, Indians. We used to just play football. Um, and it, it used to be that... We used to use our coats on our bags as goalposts. Do you know what I mean? Do you remember obviously them days? Yeah, yeah, of course, man. Yeah, yeah. We, we just all we needed to be basically four of those on the opposite sides, but just play football and uh, pick teams and stuff. And then, but the thing was in school, there was a lot of um, racism happening. So there was a, a bit of a conflict, obviously, with the mixes and stuff. Um, but 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 what I'm what I'm trying to ask is so look hmm. at it just from the footballing side of things. Mm. Forget yeah. all, all this stuff. So you know, a lot, lot. Um, after I just said, um, obviously you've got school studies to do. <clears throat> then, like you said, especially Muslims, and then they got the Islamic studies to do. Yeah. Then you've got, like you said, you got the whole cultural thing. You know, got these other, all these other activities and things like that to go to, and you got. Mm. Whereas. You know, with the white generations that I always used to see, they didn't have any of that. They didn't, you no. know, they didn't have to worry about any of those yeah, extra, yeah. extra curriculum yeah, activities, yeah. for one of a better word. Yeah, it was yeah. just go out, play. And, yeah, and yeah, just like, do it, go it, play. It, yeah, like you know, with the school football team and cricket team, just even the cricket team, like there was no Asians on there. There was it was just a thing where Asians didn't want to get involved more into it. Do you know what I mean, like when it comes to sports and trying out for the football trials and stuff like that. Um, like, there was the one or two who were really good, outstanding, but they didn't want to push themselves. I think for them it was more education. But now it's like 20-odd years later, I see them on the streets and they're doing taxis and stuff. You know what I mean? And it's just that that could have been different for you lot because you guys were talented. You know what I mean? Like, you guys were better than me, better than other people. Like, probably one of the best footballers that I've seen. Do you know what I mean? One of them that I do know who's gone on to become a coach in Dubai, uh, it was a Bengali. I think he's a year older than me. I won't mention his name, uh, but he trialled up for the football team. Um, he got into the football team. Um, I think he had a trial with Oldham, Rochdale, and I'm not too sure what the third team was. And he was in the category of basically Azim. Do you know what I mean? He wanted to make it as a footballer. But there was a lot of, you know, because there was a lot of racism happening as well. It was a bit tough for him because at one point when he was in training, obviously, with the school as well, he got injured. And for him, it came to a point where he just thought, you know what, it's not going to happen. I'm going to try it. But then he switched to the coaching side to it. Did his B-level and everything during, I think it was college or whatever, because I used to keep on track with him. Um, and one of my uncles used to be a coach as well. Um, so he went under his obviously guidance and stuff, and now he's literally in Dubai as a coach, uh, doing really well. Um, he he only comes over like I think in the summers. Um, but there no, there was nothing, there was nothing pushing it. We didn't have it easy. That's the thing. And I, you know what is? I don't think we, I, I don't think we want it enough, enough as well. You just I, mentioned racism there. I'm just gonna jump in with something that's more modern day, right? Um, obviously my sister lives down south kids come up here every sort of half term summer holidays whatever and you know they spend time with us and during the summer last year I got my nephew enrolled in a local soccer school again not going to say the name not going to say the club um because I've already dealt with matters internally and they know exactly how my family felt with it and my nephew went there now fair enough he's not from this area he's not gonna have friends in the area that's cool yeah but he was one of, I think, three Asian lads in this sort of soccer school for a week. 
And on the first day, he was like, like, my sister went to pick him up and he was just stood sort of at where the bench would be with these like, other two like Asian scared. lads. Like, yeah, scared, no, like, nervous, like, like they were obviously, they were taken off or whatever, but yeah. it was also the fact that these other kids weren't passing to them. Mm. And like every time they got the ball, someone would clatter into them. Mm. So like he didn't enjoy it. And my sister was like, look, you know, you don't have to go if you don't want to. It's fine. Like we've tried it. And, you know, like I said, we dealt with matters ourselves, but that's something that's that happened in 2023. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, in this day and age, that shouldn't be happening. Mm. Some of the stories I saw in that documentary shouldn't be happening. And even more recent, I don't know if you guys saw Manny's Twitter, um, what happened to Manny and his son. And Manny admitted, he goes, I lost it. And we saw him. He's cool, calm, collected, loves a laugh. And you just think, like, in the day and age that we live in, it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, hmm. Like, I, 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 hundred, I hundred percent agree. Um, but I don't think we, as Asians, do ourselves any favors either. No, oh, absolutely, true. absolutely. Yeah, you're, true. you're right. Uh, because yeah. I mean, I, I, again, I can only talk about my own experience. So even at primary school, I was the only yeah. um, brown face to be playing on the football team. Same in secondary school. Um, you know, going slightly back to school, like you said, um, Aki. You know, even with the racism, mm. everybody. This is one of the words that would happen to me. They would say, "You know what? We fucking hate the p word." Yeah, but you're yeah. all right. You are. Yeah, and you know why that was? That was because I kind of integrated in with them i i when yeah. i say with them i mean i i, I was just myself i never saw myself mm. as a color yeah, yeah. you know what i'm trying to say yeah. i never saw myself as anything else i mean it's just that, me. isn't that the whole thing though like you're going to school but you don't see as color but you yeah, just yeah. see as everyone as human being the same blood and everything do you know what i mean we, we see that because we're, we, yeah. we, we we you know we're not different if that makes yeah. it. i mean how can you put it we, we we've come into a country and we don't we don't talk about it yeah. whereas obviously say you know um say white people might say of oh, the yeah. come over from pakistan india whatever and you know the typical line used to be they're taking our jobs and all this kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. so i'll get that but then what i also get as well if we now look you know the new wave of say immigrants that, that come over mm. they don't integrate themselves very well no they do don't. you know what i mean mm. they keep you they keep themselves away from themselves you know they keep themselves to themselves mm. and they don't go but once see again to me what it is again is even at uni you know i've had people say talk to me say you know uh one of my friends her sister was like you know what i've never spoken to a colored person before you're the first mm. person and i think she was about like 18 do you know what I mean? Yeah, I exactly. But what I'm trying to say is they were down from down south. So it was almost like they don't get to interact with people. They don't get to see them. But you see a lot, uh, especially within Asians as well, they've got a lot of attitude. Yeah, they do. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, around, like, it's, it's, ego, it's ego and pride. And they, they just think that their own being as well, as in like, uh, uh, like the, the way I see it, there used to be a lot of people that are Asians as well. I used to think they've got it all because of the cast, if that makes sense. And yeah, yeah, used to, yeah, yeah, yeah. They used to bring cast into it, yeah, with yeah, a yeah, higher yeah. The cast. Higher because extra. of the higher cast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I, th- I think that's what it also comes down to. I'm not saying it's, it's mainly that, but I think that's also part of it as well. Yeah, and, and I mean, it's, it's because what I'm, where I'm going with this, nobody's born a racist. No, they're not. They're Nobody not. knows anything. Okay, it's it's mm. an education thing where kids have been, brought, you know, told certain things and stereotypes. And it, it's amazing how many times people are like, oh, I heard this, I heard this, and this, this. But you're all right, man. This, this you know, you, mm. this, that, the other. You I know, you're just the same times. as us. No, yeah, well, that was true, though, isn't it? You know, even mm. with us, you know, even with technology, totally different. If somebody doesn't understand something, they just stay away from it. They're, 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 they're yeah. scared of it. They're like, oh, what the hell is that kind of thing? Mm. Do you know what I mean? They don't open and embrace it and think, right, I want to learn what it is or anything. And same goes with this as well. And, and I think sometimes we can end up having too much of, you know, like they will say, oh, we want to ban them. We don't want them to play football. We want to find them. Mm. We, we hope he yeah. gets kicked out of a team and this, that, the other. Mm. And it's just like, well, you're going to run even more adversity by doing that. You're going to fuel even more hatred rather yeah. than what we should be doing. Saying, look, 
let's educate them you know spend some time in in, in e either with people or different you know when we used to be at school i don't know whether you guys did it you know we went to the gurdwara we went to a mosque yeah. we went to a church mm. yeah uh, you know we so not. you get to understand what different cultures mm. are and what they do do you know what i mean and i think that's the biggest thing that for me is missing and and where i'm going with this is and i think even coach rudy kind of um tweeted it recently as well it's all fine and well us asians talking about the hidden football talents and how with this racism and how we don't get seen and things like that which i think is absolutely true um and i think there is um education needed mm. on the whole you know lifestyle and what what, are, what we want to do etc but within ourselves there's so much politics yeah, like you just touched upon there yeah. okay when we said there's just so like we're the cast and we're better than you we're higher than you and things yeah. like there's so certain much of casts that. will only marry within certain castes yeah. pakistanis won't marry bengalis and indians and this that and it's well, just well, well, whatever look every every bit's got its own place do you know what i mean and, and, and i understand it kind of thing you know but what i'm trying to say is that there's always so many internal fights, so many things. I mean, even when I was playing uh, again for football uh, and Asian teams, like I said, I, I was playing for Sporting Castle, who was on the program as well. Mm. I played for them a little bit. Then I went to another Asian team as well. But even when then, you, to, to mix in, you had to be a certain way. Yeah. You had to, yeah. you know, I, I wasn't really a big drinker by that time, do you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, but you had to drink, you had to do what they, what, what they were doing and things like that, do you know what I mean? Even that put you off um do you know what i mean and the way like you said it, it was all about like cars and showing off all you uh, yeah. i've got this i've got that whereas with with white people gory you don't really see as that much and this is where no. i was trying to you know when you yeah. when you see when you you know talking to go they just want to have a good time and be together have a drink together or whatever mm. but they'll never you'll never see like the abuse they'll give to each other yeah there's banter mm. but where are they yeah. with Asians? I think there is seriously some serious beef some, there. Don't like it. Because even half, even then, like you just mentioned there, apne hai on apne. So, I mean, everyone 100%. knows it. Everyone yeah. knows it. An Asian guy will hit on another Asian guy because he's doing good or he's doing he's, he's doing obviously better than him or whatever or because of the cast again. But it's just like when you see it from the flip side to it. The other side to it, when it comes to the white people, like obviously, I'm not trying to be racist here, but no, it's just with, as we see in here, as we say, yeah. as we see in here. Yeah. But they're not gonna be, they're not gonna hate on each other, like you said. All they want is a good job, a, a nice car, um, education, and, and and that's all it is. Whereas <laughs> we're trying to beat that education and trying to get a good car with a flashy car, just drive around streets. Like, can I ask you boys a question? Go on, sure. This just popped into my head now that we're talking about this whole. I'm gonna call it brown on brown hate. <laughs> you know what? I, I've actually got two questions, but later on though. Okay, that's fine. Let me go. Let me go first. Go on. So <laughs> obviously, we came together roughly about a year ago. Been a wild year, but <laughs> before that, like in your personal lives, did you two ever have anything where it was like you did something good or whatever, you achieved something and like someone else like not necessarily well a family member or a friend someone else like another asian was like you know go on that like you know well done like was that ever a thing for you boys or was it always like i think especially like you said within the apple community no one gives you a pat on the back and says oh that's really good or or, or gives you encouragement okay well, what about that's you? not a thing yeah, I think I'm the same. Where I've, I've never, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I've never had anyone say good about me. It's always been hate. Which I can understand why. I can understand why, Aki, man. You're gonna be banned <laughs> on Twitter and things like that. Like, do you know what I mean? Just being associated oh, with man. you. No, I'm I know, a good but, thing to say yeah. about you either. <laughs> I know. Yeah. No, but it's like even, yeah. even, even growing up. Like, I wanted to do art, but I was told not to do it. I still did it. Like everyone kept saying, like, bro, my own own uncle, my blood uncle, goes to me. He sat me down and he goes, Akil, don't do art. I'm like, would you why? And he goes, Look, I know you love it and stuff, but become a doctor. I'm like, I'm not your son. I'm your I'm I'm your nephew, but I'm not your son. Do you know what I mean? You know what? If he watches this, I'm not your son. You know what I mean? But it's like I've come this far in what I did because I went I went obviously college and etc. And I managed to obviously be something. Do you know what I mean? When it comes to the art side, but 
it is what it is. I think I think with hit, that, Aki, I, I think with that, I think they again, it's the whole typical thing. They they kind of set you up, so yeah, everybody, yeah. you know, they're, they're looking after you. But I think probably more what Afsal's referring to, and and I think you've also mentioned that when you mm. do do something good, yeah, it's not it's not very you know nobody's. I can put it. No one's gonna back you up. No one's gonna encourage you or or, or say anything. And I, and I and I think it's that's the support just a, network. The support. Maybe, yeah, they're not gonna support yeah. you. But I, I think, you know what? I think it might be one of those things where, to your face, they'll be nice to you. They'll say yeah, congratulations. But behind the scenes, they probably say, look, you know what? I'm not even. I'm not even asked about that guy. Because from really my like, own personal experience, it was like, oh, you know, you did this, but. I'm throwing out a random name. Uncle Mosh Stark's son did this, and this person did this, and this person's in this uni, and this person. And it's like, just, you know, in a way, that was kind of belittling because it's like, mm. you feel like you've done something, you feel like you've achieved something, and straight away it's shot down. Yeah, I think I think I think going back to the football, I think we reached out to a few families and young players who were playing in the professional game. Yeah. And and you know, they're not being able to come onto the podcast and we we kind of knew why and we kind of accept that. Um and we, we totally understand it as well. But the first thing that came to us was just how great of people there were. Yeah. And not just the just the kids who, you know, the the, the the football players but the family themselves uh and what that what that transpires to me is like oh wow you know you can see that they're in their zone they're not worried about anybody else they're not got time to hate the focusing on where they need to focus mm-hmm. whereas i think what we're saying is a lot of the time people have got other agendas other folks they want their child to be like this they want to just think about their child because again um how my son play you know i, I knew from very young you know he was never going to be a professional but I just wanted him to go and enjoy himself but then you've got some people who want their kids to become a professional footballer and they're getting you know one-on-one coaching and they've been told be selfish with the ball be selfish with the ball don't pass it don't Mm. do this because you've got to stand out you've got to look good you know that that kind of thing um but you can see where it's a lot of it is just about themselves because they're trying to say you know our child's the one but then we, we've also heard from different people as well, even with the happening within the professional game, not necessarily um, players, ex-players, I think, who are trying to do good. They believe even they're holding other people back as well. We've yeah. heard them stories as well, haven't we, whereby on the face of it, they look like they're trying to help, yeah. but really they're holding you back for their own motives. Yeah, like, it's like they're almost trying to keep their place amongst relativity. Yeah, of or, the game, you know, yeah. or of where they're at. One thing know, I want so. to say though, like you just mentioned, some of the kids we reached out to again, no mention of any names, you know, just to protect everyone's privacy there. But one of the kids I remember replied and he said, I'll have to speak to my parents first. He mentioned parents first, then he mentioned the club, then he mentioned his agent. And I thought, the level of respect, like, I was almost blown away. And I was, I was like, wow, like, this is amazing. Like, mm-hmm you know, this still exists in society. And I was just so proud of him. Yeah, like, we were just, just like, responded in that way. I was, we were blown away. And, and I, think, <laughs> um, I think for us, that was even better than coming onto the podcast. Yeah. Because yeah, we, like... we genuinely just felt for them, do you know what? I hope, lad, you make it. Because mm-hmm. just on your attitude alone, we want you to, you know, we want you to make it, you know. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think, um, okay, just going on to your your two questions because you know I don't think we want to stand the subject for too yeah. long. You you know I I, I think um, for me and I think for you boys probably the same as well. That that documentary was absolutely fantastic and I think it was great and I and yeah. I think it, it does show that we have got talent out there. We have got players who have been playing. The whole stereotypes about physical strength mm. I think that's been debunked. You know the whole education piece uh, and you know all the, the other diet. things. Uh, yeah, the diet mm. and all that kind of thing um, has got debunked. You know, uh, and I think our players are strong enough and things of that nature. But I'll go back to the people who are going to hold us back are going to be ourselves. Yeah. Mm. You know, so I, I think I think until we get over that barrier. And, you know, unless you use meritocracy uh, as a thing as well, and I totally get 
because of asking Kulu, we can get held back a little bit. And, you know, it goes to show that some of these players who weren't known as South Asians, they did make it. And and I just quickly want to touch upon that because I think some people, some of the people said they felt guilty, that they felt they should have pushed it more and things like that. Whereas I just thought in a selfish way, I thought, well, I, I get it. Nobody else is going to look after you. Mm. Like, we, like we've just said, nobody's going to give you the shabash and say, oh, you know, bloody yeah. hell, you you sacrificed yourself yeah. for us Asians to make a name, but yeah, well done. They're not going to do that. So you, you kind of have got yeah. to look after yourselves in that way. And I don't get it, why any of those players felt they they felt that, not ashamed, but they're, 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 they're regretful that they hadn't pushed themselves more. Yeah, because I think in the article, not in the article, in the documentary, they mentioned, um, I think it was Miriam who mentioned, or the narrator, saying that there's a lot more people who are retired footballers now that are slowly coming out in terms of having um, that Asian South background, Asian heritage. Heritage, yeah. Yeah, heritage. One of them, obviously, we talked about with Jimmy Carter, wasn't it? Um, yeah. There is he's... Rosario as well. Um, yeah, I think Robert something. Robert Rosario. I yeah, so I know yeah, 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 I, I'm yeah, actually yeah. gonna I'm actually, I'm actually gonna base the question on Jimmy Carter because he's one of the main ones that we talked about. This is one of your two questions, yeah. 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 So the yeah, first one, on Jimmy Carter. So if Jimmy Carter had his name to be Indian, in that flip side, when he was playing, do you think he would have made it? No. No chance. Why? I I think I think he just goes to show like the likes of Neil Taylor. Yeah. Um, you know, he was one. Um, I think one of the girls who plays for Blackburn, Mario uh, Mahmoud. Mario Mahmoud, Mahmoud, yeah. No, 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 sorry. Um, no, that's, West Brom. that's West Brom. No, 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 sorry, sorry. Um, the girl who's a uh, mixed race, Millie, I think. Oh, Millie Chandrana, yeah, it's Chandrana. Chandrana. Yeah, it's yeah, 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 yeah. I think she plays for Blackburn, right? Yeah, 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 she, yeah, she does, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. She does. Again, I think she kind of said it, you know, do you know what I mean? Because it, her name was Millie, and you know, you yeah. kind of, uh, I think it goes to show the name would make a lot of difference. Um, so here's a flip side to it, though. Mm -hmm. the two other names is Zishan Rahman and mm -hmm. Hamza Chowdhury. They, mm -hmm. I'm gonna say, typical Asian names. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. how come they've made it and Jimmy Carter back then, as if he had an Asian name back then, wouldn't make it? I think we Hamza. I think A comes from a, a part of the it's 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 that generation and it comes from a background where there is a lot of Asians from around that mm. um Leicester. Yeah. From yeah, around yeah. that um yeah. community, you know. Mm. There is a lot of South Asians around there. So I think it might have been easier. I and look, I don't want to downplay what he's had to no. go through because yeah, uh, it probably did, but I think even within the documentary it says, you know, it was kind of okay for him, like do you know what I mean? Mm. And I think um so you know, he's kind of accepted, you know, even their owners are South Asia, well, mm. Asians, you know, um, yeah. from Thailand, I think they are. I was yeah. gonna correct me if I'm yeah, wrong yeah. on that one. Um, so I, I think that whole club there and, 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 um, Buell and Endor, he's talented. Forget yeah. everything else. Yeah. yeah. He's a talented player. Yeah. Even Zesh, but, Zesh is from Birmingham as well. So it's basically an Asian, Asian kind think, of yeah. area, isn't it? I mean? Yeah, I, I think that as well. But look, I think with Zesh as well, I think he was good. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I think I think for somebody like Zesh, his physicality really helped him as well. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. tall player, big player, like do you know what I mean? I, I think yeah. as a defender, yeah. You know, he again he had skill. Yeah. You know, so don't get me wrong. He he obviously didn't know what he had to do. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But then you, you got you got players like Danny Bart, um, yeah. who's also mixed race as well. Um, yeah. We know well. I don't know him personally, but we know people of who's whose relatives are. Yeah. Uh, and you know that he's very into you know the Sikh side of things. Punjabi mm. heritage. He backs that. You know, Bart is a is a is a, a Punjabi surname, but you won't know. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And he yeah. doesn't look it either. You know. Yeah. So I think, like it says, yes, there's always one or two who go. You know, who will go through the likes of Hamza mm. Chowdhury and things like that, and and Zesh. But I think majority it was because of. You, you can't tell Neil yeah. Taylor, you know, Jimmy mm. Carter, and all these others. The, mm. There is that. One What's his thing, name as well? The one who used to play for Newcastle, Michael Chopra, and Ka Michael, Michael Chopra, Chopra as well. Michael like, Chopra, do you know what I mean? Yeah. One thing that stuck out for me in that documentary is when they interviewed Mal on the pitch. I think it was like a playoff win or something. 
or I don't know, they won something. And he mentioned, the first thing he mentioned was, oh, this is about other, he said something about it's about other Indians, like it's not just about me. And I just thought like, you know, these lads are carrying that torch. And, you know, you, you like you said, we had Zesh, we've now got Hamza, we've got Zidane. Mm. I hope Zidane comes back to the Premier League. I'll be honest with you yeah. boys. Speaking of Zidane, he's my second question. Um, so, you know how, obviously, when he made it, his debut for United and stuff, and right? in the Champions League night, it all Trafford, there must have been, what, 70,000 people. Mix as well, white, Asian, do you know what I mean? As an Asian, obviously, we were we were proud that Zidane, Zidane was on the Twitch line coming on. Do you know what I mean? Like, it was a huge moment for us because, obviously, he's, he's the first Asian to actually step on the pitch for United and stuff. Do you know what I mean? But the flip that, that I always think about watching that documentary was how do you, how, how do we think the other side saw it as would it be a proud moment that obviously an Asian guy's coming into our club, you know what I mean, a British club. When you say the oh, other side, what do you mean the other side? As in the white, obviously the white fans, okay. do you know what I mean? So would, like, I, I would love to ask a question in terms of it, do you know what I mean, like, and get an honest, I, I know I would never get an honest answer about it, but I would love to get an honest answer, like, how how do you feel having Zidane? I think if me or Harps asked, we might get the honest answer. If you ask, it might be a different story. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but this is the thing, it's just trying to get that honest answer in it. Like, how do you think they felt in terms of, obviously, having... I don't think they would have felt the emotion that we felt. Yeah. Um, that's for definite. Mm-hmm. I think to them, it again, I mean, no offence, just preface that. I think to them, it may have come across as it's just another academy graduate, just another one off yeah. the line. Mm. Which, like, which just, is the right way of thinking about lad. it. Which, which, yeah, which it is, is the right yeah. way. Yeah. I think yeah, yeah. Zidane Iqbal would want the same yeah, as well. Like, you know. the, the, the thing is, I'm not, I'm not pressuring the questions out to people to answer, but it's like, I think these questions need to be asked sometimes um, yeah. if, you, if you want to push others into it as well. And I think going on to what, what you know, um, as I said about Mal, and, and I think that's right. You know, I, I think first and foremost, when these players play, they just want to play as players. They don't look at themselves as uh, as role models as for Asians or anything like that. But I think if you've been through it, it's been difficult. You know, you, you kind of do do that. You know, you do think of yourself like that. And I, and again, I think even with Zidane, Zidane Iqbal, I don't think he went through those difficulties. Do you know what I mean? I think he's been at United Academy for a very young age. Um, so, so you know, he'd done something right. I think a lot of the time it is talent. You know, you've got to be talented. But, yeah, you know, it's more than just a the player themselves, the network of the player, the, the, the parents, the sacrifices. You know, you hear all these stories of uh, parents are taking their kids here, there and everywhere. You know, they're sacrificing themselves, you know, missing um, family events and things like that. Would we do that? Our, our Asians do that? I don't think so. But the odd person, the odd one or two do. I the second is a wedding well. invite. We're there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're early. You know do you know what I mean? mean? I think uh, I think they're there. So, but look, um, see, so just moving on from this subject, I think it was a great, it was a great um program, and I think it kind of really highlighted a lot for people who who probably don't realise that there are South Asians with talent, and I think it is coming through. They will come through, no doubts about it. You know, um, even if it's the next generation, there will be players who will come through. Um, but like I says, I think it would be interesting if we can try and get um, Coach Rudy on here again, just to see. I know he put out a tweet recently, and I think it's a, the right Rudy tweet. Rudy is and, fuming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So things have gone on, like I said, behind the scenes where we're not able to, the Appenham not being able to help Appenham because of whatever, they're looking after their own mm. interest. And more likely than not, it's usually their back pocket and their and their, their status within the game, etc. But um, no, and, and thank you um, for the producer who who'd made that there, Tom, Tom Mordy, um, and yeah. Miriam Walker Khan, obviously the yeah. host or presenter, whatever you want to call her, um, Tejas Katecha, who did the editing on that, and thank you to every, all the players, you know, all the players, all the managers, the guys from you know Riz from the PFA, there was guys from the FA, like it was just amazing to see, and I think it was about time it happened. Um, me personally, it opened my eyes up. There was a lot more South Asians than I actually realised in the game, and it just, just makes you proud, man. 
hundred percent, hundred percent, man. Um, boys, moving on. Then I think um, the small little game on Saturdays, and there about three o'clock kickoff. Is it what time's the kickoff? I don't even know what time it is. You know, <laughs> the FA yeah, Cup final. Just yeah, some uh, some some final. Some some final. You know, what I think it's four I'm o'clock on out. Saturday. Is it four o'clock? Yeah. No, no, it's three o'clock. I was right. Kickoff. Three o'clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was right. See, I'm not bad. Um. Yeah, are you even so... going to ask? What predictions? <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll tell you what, no, before we go into that, oh, right? Is. One word. How did the Premier League season go for us? Any disaster. Disaster. All right, sweet. Disaster. Hops. One word. Yeah, it, it's a disaster, but I, I also. Oh, come on, yeah, that one word. <laughs> Disaster. All right, sweet. I would have said calamity, but same thing. Yeah, yeah right. FA Cup final. What were you? Right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go first. I'm gonna be honest. I I do think we have got a chance, but it depends about who plays. That's all it is. I mean, if you believe the press, pretty much half the squad's fit again. Yeah, I know. This this is the thing because now uh, convenient. Yeah, could just seeing everyone train and whatever. I mean, Harry Maguire's out in it, but just seeing the players back in training and stuff like we could have done this before. Do you know what I mean? Like we needed this before, but um, it depends who comes, who who plays, who starts. Uh, then I, I can only make my decision. But I know we're gonna get we're gonna lose. <laughs> So it doesn't matter who starts. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, to me, yeah. To me, it doesn't matter who starts. Yeah. Um, I know this Manchester United side has that thing in them where we can turn up and win. Mm. I just don't think we can do that against Pep's Manchester City. Mm. Oh, look, it's a one-off game and anything can happen. Um, I just think... You, you know, even if you, you hear the rumours like Luke Shaw or I think Lindelof and Anthony Marshall, Mason Mount and all these other players might be available, but they might as well not be because they've got no, they've got no match rhythm or anything like that, do you know what I mean, to play. So I think you, you've you got the team that you've that we've had for the last four or five games. You know, I'll include Leecher in that as well. So, And is that going to give me confidence to beat them? No. Mm. Um... But I'm happy with not having that confidence because we usually win by that time. Um, but no, um, yeah, I don't think we'll, we'll get a result. I don't think we'll get a result. So I wasn't going to ask you, Aki, what the result's going to be because I think we all kind of, we all kind of know. But um, I don't know whether we talk about Ten Hag now or, or, or we leave it till after. No, I, I think we leave it. I think we've got. We leave it time. till after because. Yeah, I think we've I've got, got a good time. feeling he's going to get Van Hald. <laughs> you know what? I I hope he does. Um, because yeah. you know at least he's go, gone out on a high, and I think mm-hmm. we can touch up on all the rest for the for the next episode. Then okay, well look, boys, we'll we'll leave it there because um no doubt we're gonna get back soon as well. We have got some other shows lined up, um some brand Monday episodes as well. So you know coming soon, and um some other hopefully exciting stuff coming up as well, man. I think we're really looking forward to. But yeah, um as and when. But everybody, thank you for tuning in and um, have a great FA Cup final.